If you're like many of our customers, you're wondering if the Part D donut hole affects you and you're wondering what the Part D or Medicare Part D donut hole is. Hey, I'm Justin Brock with Bobby Brock Insurance, a Medicare guru company, and we are going to help you understand the principles of Medicare Part D. Stick around to the end and we'll tell you how to avoid seven costly mistakes that people make with their Medicare all the time. The Medicare Part D donut hole. Yes, it did close in 2020, but that doesn't mean your costs do not change in the year. So what does it mean when we say the Medicare Part D donut hole has closed? Well, due to some legislation that came about after the Medicare Part D program in 2006, they slowly reduced the out-of-pocket each calendar year that someone could face when they went into the donut hole. So in order to know what I'm talking about, let's backtrack and figure out what the donut hole is. So there are four phases to your Medicare Part D coverage. There's phase one, which is the deductible. Phase two is the initial coverage period. Phase three is the donut hole or coverage gap. And phase four is the catastrophic phase. Phase one, you have a deductible up to, in 2020, $435. Now this is the part that you pay before your drug coverage starts picking up anything. Now some drug plans have zero deductible, some have somewhere in between, 200, 250, 300, but 435 is the most that you can have. Now if you have only tier one and two medications, some drug plans waive the deductible altogether. So you may not be paying a deductible even though there is one on the plan if you get prescribed a brand name medication in the middle of the year. So if you're not paying a deductible, then you get an inhaler or an insulin prescribed and all of a sudden you're having to pay $435. That could be a one-time thing that then goes away um, after that for the remainder of the calendar year. Second, the second phase is the initial coverage period. This is right after you leave that deductible period. And on the initial coverage period, you have, uh, you have your standard co-pays. This is what most people are used to, paying a dollar for tier one, or two dollars to four dollars to five dollars for tier twos. Completely different depending on which drug plan you have, but each tier has a standard copay in this period. Now, once you've gotten to a combined total cost of $4,020 out of pocket for the year, you would enter the third phase, which officially is called the coverage gap, often referred to as the donut hole. But in that coverage gap, you now have certain medications, particularly brand name medications, that you then have to pay 25% of the cost of those medications while you're in that phase. So remember, this is after your total cost has, has, has hit $4,020 in the calendar year period. Now, when you hint, enter this coverage gap, remember we said that they have closed the donut hole? Well, technically when they closed it, they just bottomed it out. They reduced it to where the most that you could pay would be 25% of the cost of the brand name. Well, as many of you have probably figured out, 25% of the cost of a brand name can still be a lot of money. If it's a $1,000 drug, that's still a $250 copay. If it's a $100 drug, it's a $25 copay. Now, if the standard copay in the initial coverage period, that second phase of drug coverage, was $20, but the MSRP of the drug is $100, then when you enter that donut hole, you're going to have to pay $25 instead of $20. So your copay is going up to 25% of the cost of that drug. This is where people do have that increased cost. Now right now, it's still estimated that only about 19% of Part D users or Medicare beneficiaries are affected by the donut hole. But for that 19%, it can really be a nuisance and a problem and we understand that. The catastrophic phase is actually the last phase or the fourth phase of your drug plan. And in that phase, once your total net cost, the cost to you as the consumer, is $6,350, you enter a phase where you can't be charged more than 5% of the cost of that drug. Okay, obviously after you're out $6,350, that's still a lot of money. 
again, this is a relatively small portion of the total Part B population that, that hits these numbers. But again, it can be a lot of money for those people. So there are ways to try to avoid this. There are programs, there are prescription assistance plans, and there are just methods to try to make sure that you're, you're uh, taken care of as well as possible. So what we try to get people to do is download our uh, book that our founder, Bobby Brock, wrote called Seven Costly Mistakes with Your Medicare. This is, these are the seven most common problems we have. Many do re relate to the drug coverage. And in, in our description below, you can link over and download that. Now, one of the more recent things that people have been talking about in the news is the cap on insulin cost. Insulin cost will be or should be we expect to see cap with many drug plans at $35 this year. Now that really will help a lot of people probably avoid the donut hole. We're still yet to see how that officially pans out, but it is something that we're going to be investigating fully and be able to help people navigate uh, by the time those new plans open up. So I hope this helps you understand how to navigate Medicare and Part D and I hope these illustrations uh, help answer some of your questions. Any questions you still have, please subscribe below and leave a comment and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Thank you for watching and head over to our website, bobbybrockinsurance.com for more information.